Today I'm going to be testing the internal resistance of the cells within this unknown battery module. Now the internal resistance of a cell is a measure of how well it can discharge current. And so the, the, high, the, the lower the resistance, the better it is at pushing that current out. So in electric vehicles, you want something with really low internal resistance, if you can. So the reason I'd like to know the internal resistance is because I don't know what these cells are. And so if I can get an idea of how well they can discharge current, I'll be able to see what applications I can use them for. Also, there are six cells in, the, in this side of the module here. And so if, if they all have a similar internal resistance, then they're well matched. If they're all different, then maybe the, the pack is a bit dodgy and maybe I shouldn't use it for, for anything too high discharge. To do the internal resistance test, what we need to do is run a, a lot of current out of the battery and measure the voltage before we do that and while we're doing that. And so for an example, I've got here a specification sheet from an LG E80, E63 uh, cell, which I think is probably quite similar to these cells. They look similar, not absolutely sure they are the same, but that's what I'm going on. And so this describes their standard test that they did. And for that cell, they tested it at 175 amps discharge current. Uh, now I have two cells in parallel. So if I was going to do it at 175 amps, I'd need to double that because they're in parallel. I'm not going to, I'm going to aim for something like 100 amps and with two cells, that'll be about 50 amps each. You can see here that the internal resistance of these cells was, was sort of 1.38 at the top. And then once they, once it was quite low state of charge, it was all the way up to 11.66. These are the sorts of values I'm looking for if this is a similar cell. Here I've got some numbers. I'm trying to work out with my test rig, what, what, how can I do a, a 50 amps per cell, 100 amps altogether. Um, so I can't, I can't test an individual cell. I have to go for a module. All the module, uh, the module is adding up to about 20 volts at the moment. And so we've got here V equals IR. So for 100 amps, 20 volts, I need a resistance of about 0.2 ohms. And then this is going to get hot. How hot? About two, point, uh, about two kilowatts worth of heat. And so that's similar to a, a kettle. So I need to realize, right, I, I need something that can take that amount of heat and, and not melt over the 10 second test time that I'm going to do. So I was thinking about what I have here that could take that sort of current and I thought of fencing wire. So if you look up a specification to fencing wire, this is probably something like what I've got. Uh, they give it in ohms per kilometer. Uh, so 50 ohms per kilometer. In here, we've got 1000 meters, 50 ohms. At 100 meters, that's five ohms. At 10 meters, that's 0.5 ohms, which is getting around the same range as my 0.2 ohms that I'm after. Since I don't know if I've got this exact fencing wire, what I'm going to do is do a, a test at 10 meters, which in theory should be sort of oh, a bit less than 50 amps, something like that. I'll do the test at 10 meters and measure the current going through it with a clamp meter. And I should be able to work out the exact resistance of this wire. So this time I'll just do a test very briefly. So here's my test rig. So what I've got here is the uh, let's see the negative, I think, and positive terminals of the of the battery module. This one here goes in through here. Underneath here, I've got a fuse, and then through uh, an isolation switch. At the moment, that's pushed down, so it's disconnected, and then runs out of that cable there. The positive runs through that cable, and these two cables run out here. I've got it connected to fencing wire with a little. Uh, electric fence connector there and that runs out 10 meters of wire. I'm hoping that sitting on the grass there it'll be fine especially for my first test where I'm testing the basically the, the um, resistance of that piece of wire. Back on my battery module here I've got this electronics up the top these are my uh, cell monitoring devices. So each one of these will monitor the voltage of one of the cells. So to do that, I've got them connected up with wires through little clips down here. 
And so each one of these has the positive and negative terminal of each one of the, the six pairs of cells within there. They report back via these red and black wires to the master unit. So this here is the uh, my prototyping um, setup for the BMS master. And you can see what it's saying here is that the total voltage is 21.1 volts. The highest cell is 3.51 volts. The lowest is 3.51 volts. They are all the same. And what this means here is H1, so that's the highest cell is cell number one, and the lowest cell is also cell number one. This is also uh, sending data through to the computer, and the computer is recording it here. The four Fs are hex values for the 3.51 volts, and so we can record it on here, although it's not immediately obvious what the, the voltage is. We can do some calculations afterwards. So this will record the voltage of each individual cell while I do my test without me having to do any writing down of a voltmeter reading or anything like that. So for this first test, I'm just going to connect the fencing wire, read the current off this clamp meter, and then disconnect the fencing wire again. And that'll make sure uh, it will be a quick test to make sure that my fuse doesn't blow, um, that I can discharge, disconnect via the, the switch, and I'll see what my current is. Now, say I've miscalculated something and the uh, isolation switch doesn't isolate this for some reason. It arcs across and, and so on, starts to, to get hot. Uh, my emergency plan for disconnection is that I'll come down here and I'll use these fencing pliers to cut through this wire here. Ready to go. Here goes nothing. I don't know what happened there, why the amps went up and then off again. We'll go and see. Let's do this test again. We'll see. Uh, I'm, I haven't used this meter much and I'm wondering whether it's how I'm using it. And we'll go again. Ah, oh, it's on AC. There we go. So at 43 amps, it's going down. As it's heating up, it must be getting getting better. So 40, let's say 40 amps. I have this styrofoam here to see how hot this is. So after my test there, it's definitely warm. Uh, so that was 40 amps. I reckon we'll be all right with 100 amps through here for 10 seconds. Just check anything else. Oh, that connector is really good as is the other connector, happy with that. So we've just measured 40 amps and we want to know the, so that's the current we're going, we know the voltage, we don't want to know the resistance. And so volts divided by amps will equal the resistance. So uh, 20 volts divided by 40 amps is uh, 0.5, isn't it? So 0 0.5 ohms, ah, which is exactly what, what was, was estimated by that, that online specification sheet. Good, so to get uh, 100 amps, I need to go to 0.2 ohms. How many meters is that? So 10 meters is 0.5 ohms, so 20 meters is one ohm. If you divide 20 by, sorry, if you divide one by five, then you get 0 0.2. And if you divide 20 by five, then you get four. So four meters should be 0 0.2 ohms. So I might go and cut my wire until it's four meters long.
Okay, I've trimmed off my wire to four meters. And so I've set it up to do 100 amps now. now I'll change this to DC because that's important. And then let's do our test. We want to do it for 10 seconds. Something like 10 seconds. And it was something like 70, 100 amps at least to start with. I can smell some, some hotness happening. Let's try. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hot to the touch, uh, but it's not terrible. So that was fine for, for the 10 seconds. Uh, the heat smell I can smell is probably the grass getting hot. So here's the recording of the voltages. So if you look at cell number one here, started at 3.52, went low, and then sort of slowly recovered even as it was uh, doing the, the 100 amps. Ah, oh, yes, if you remember that it started out at 100 amps, it got lower than that, didn't it? Interestingly. Anyway, uh, yes, there we go. That's a, a 10 second test up to uh, let's let's use this value here because it's the lowest so 3.52 to 3.40 the cells are all very similar to each other each of these lines they're only 0 0.01 between them uh, consistency between them and then you can even see the the modules voltage difference there as well you can see it's immediately gone back to a good value so it seems to be quite good let's do some numbers so 3.52 minus 3.40 isn't it so 3.52 minus 3.40 that's our voltage now what was our calculation again dividing the difference by the test current so if we say it's 100 amps hmm that's like a uh, that's 100 milliohms, 10 milliohms, 1.2 milliohms. That's very, very good cons uh, compared to this table over here. So these cells look like they discharge very well. In summary, I learned how to use my multimeter a bit better and the cells are very good. So they've got quite a, a low internal resistance and the internal resistance is consistent between each cell within this module. This module I think would be quite a good uh, module for, for something like an electric vehicle. Thanks for watching. The next test that I'd like to do is a capacity test. So drain this battery all the way to the bottom and see how much it takes to fill it.